All right, welcome back to the SSO Family Dad channel. Today we are hooking up this boiler to the greenhouse. So we've got it all set in place out here, but I've gotta, gotta level it out and put it up on some blocks, as many people have mentioned. And rather than get the tractor out here, it is super duper muddy and the uh the tractor is just gonna be a mess out here it's gonna make trenches and 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 get stuck and all kinds of other things so what i'm gonna do is uh, i'm gonna jack the uh, boiler up and we'll put the blocks underneath the legs um it's actually i've done this before with it it's not too hard to do and we'll get it leveled out right now you can see it's way 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 off level and i've got some of these uh cement blocks we'll use to uh, a couple various thicknesses i know the back needs the thicker ones and then the front will need the thinner ones hopefully that'll level it out uh, and from side to side it's it's pretty close and i've already run a temporary uh, cord out here i had an old uh, cord from a pool pump and i've ran that out here and hooked it up to the uh to the boiler that's just temporary we're going to wire this in uh, nicely right into the box once i get the building built around it but we've got to get these, uh, this uh, circulation pump hooked up to a little diverter and then into our three quarter inch pecs that will go through the raised bed. Oh, these guys are happy now. All the water everywhere. So the raised bed is, uh, well, it's thawing out. It actually uh, it's been pretty nice in here. It's been up to about 70, 80 degrees in here on a couple days. It's been super sunny out and uh, today it's cloudy, but uh, the past few days have been pretty pretty warm. So, and we've got our PEX tubing here all set up and ready to hook up. I've got another roll of PEX here, another 100 feet just to get us out. I'll dig a trench uh, somewhere right around this area and then right out underneath the window over here. Um, I've, I've scavenged a bunch of parts and pieces. Uh, I've got this PEX uh, diverter that was inside the uh, house for the heating system. I've taken that out. Uh, I've got a few fittings and crimp tools and, and other stuff. Hopefully everything we need to uh, get this thing hooked up. And I guess we'll be working right next to these guys, so <laughs> I won't expect a, any quiet, quiet uh, working conditions, that's for sure. What I wanted to do is, I'm actually going to start uh, my foundation for my wall. I'm going to be building, for those of you who have been following along, you'll, you'll know I'm going to be building a big kind of a shed at the end of this, uh, completely out of pallets. And I'm going to start doing that uh, here this week, but I'm going to get the first section of wall built, and it's going to connect from the greenhouse right over next to the boiler. And I'm going to use that wall, and so from this side, it'll go... Um, just connecting the edge of the greenhouse there uh, just straight over to the boiler here and then I'm gonna mount my diverter right on that wall if I have enough pipe I've got a few pieces of one inch here and things I think I can get it there if not I may uh, mount a pallet right next to the boiler here on some t-posts and uh, we'll use that to mount my diverter right on the side of the boiler so we'll see how things kind of work out once I get it uh, get it set up so a good friend of mine uh, let me grab all of these these, uh, I don't know what they are, cinder block, retaining wall, landscape blocks, whatever you want to call them. Um, they are uh, nice, big, heavy uh, blocks. Uh, now I'm going to be able to use these to kind of stack underneath the pallets of the uh, building there, um, kind of create a footing that goes around the uh, underneath the walls. So that's what I'll be using these for. I think I have enough to make the whole perimeter of the building. Let's start with uh, leveling out the boiler here, uh, getting that uh, as close to level as we can. We'll get our little half wall built here. Uh, screwed together and then we'll start running some uh, PEX tubing here.
All right, so I've decided just to use the pallet on the side. Um, I was laying the footing out, and honestly, I'm really going to have to level this stuff out. I'm going to have to dig a little bit. Uh, and I just don't want to get into that portion of this uh, project today. I want to focus on getting the boiler going. So uh, you put the pallet up here, and so we'll use the diverter um, on the side of it here. And basically what we're going to do is hook our, our hot water uh, supply into this side of the diverter, and this will go up. And with it right now, it's closed off, and so it will divert it right back around, and then it will go right back into the boiler. Now, if I want to send it out to the raised bed, I'll open this and close that one and then it'll send the hot water out to the raised bed cycle through and then come back on this side and return back to the boiler so i just have to hook these two pipes up to my supply and return lines here uh, they already have fittings on them and i'm trying to reuse all this stuff i uh i am not a a pex person i've, I've never used pex fittings tools pipes or anything like that before I've always just found it to be kind of expensive and annoying to get into, and so I've just always avoided it. But So here we are, I have, have these PEX fittings, and I have to take these off, and I don't even really know, I'm not even sure if you're supposed to reuse these fittings or not, but I don't see any way to get these PEX rings off and these fittings off other than grinding or cutting the fitting or the, 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 the clamp, um, prying it open, and I've had to heat up this plastic with a torch and then work, work it off the fitting. And so hopefully that'll be okay. I have different kinds of clamps that I'm going to be using, the PEX clamps, the cheaper ones with the cheaper tool, because I'm not spending $80 to, to just start using PEX pipe. So we'll see how this goes. I have a couple 90s that I reclaimed from the, uh, the boiler setup inside. Well, let's get the grinder out and see how well this, uh, this will all work. Well, there's step one, I guess. Man, this, yeah, those PEX clamps are just, I don't, I don't know. I don't like them. They don't feel right. I'm not sure if I have the wrong tool for those clamps or if they're just cheap clamps, but they don't really feel like they're going on there very tight and I can't, can't crimp them down any tighter than they're, they're going. I've got this Apollo, it's supposed to be a, a pinch clamp tool. Um, but like I said, I really don't know much about PEX, so we'll see. <laughs> we're gonna, let's fill up the boiler and see if it leaks. These clamps that were on here, that the, uh, somebody else put on, I like these, but I'm not sure how they, I'm not sure how they work. It must be just a compression of this copper that holds it on there. They're not really on there very tight either. I mean, I can spin the PEX on the fitting, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, they're, they don't move. So so this boiler has a, well, I guess this is how we're gonna fill it. This is where the float is. <laughs> this is my, my uh, there used to be a rubber cap on here and uh, it kind of cracked away. So I put this other thing on here just to keep dirt and stuff out of it. <laughs> Got a cheese container. But then I cracked that with the tractor, so we'll get that out of there, um, and we're gonna fill it from the top. And this was hooked up in my house. Um, the pipe that went into the house was actually plumbed right into a supply valve, so I could just turn a valve on the inside. It would pump fresh water back into the tank and fill it to top it off, because it steams it steams off, you know, evaporates and stuff like that, so we'll get it low on water, but, but we don't have that anymore, so we're gonna fill it from the, the top here. If it doesn't leak, I'll get some wood in there, and we'll start to heat the boiler up. 
this little diverter just this is just what I happen to have but uh, if I want to add more loops to the greenhouse so say I want to have a maybe a forced air heating system in there or I want to have a heated uh, seedling table or something like that then I can just expand this diverter and run another three quarter inch line out here for that and then I can split the the uh, water flow between the raised bed and between whatever other uh, stuff I have set up in there so um, but instead of having the diverters on the inside of the greenhouse I'm gonna have everything mounted right out here by the wood burner hooked up and uh, insulated the outside lines here. I'm not going to dig the trench right now. Uh, the ground is still pretty frozen. Um, I could probably chisel through it but I'm just gonna just gonna hook everything up for now and, and see how things work and then we'll we'll dig these in um, probably tomorrow. Diverters, uh, the diverter seems to be working pretty good and I'm pretty sure that every single one of these one inch fittings that I did is leaking <laughs> at least a little bit. Of course it's raining out here so everything's wet so it's hard to tell but I know I'm getting getting a drip down here every once in a while. Um, oh, maybe it maybe it stopped now. Nope, oh, there it was. So I'm getting getting a few drips there. Uh, here I think I'm getting a drip. Yep, every once in a while there. And same thing with these these fittings here. These ones are actually dripping quite a bit worse. So so I, I don't know if, if these. This pipe is really old, so it's very brittle. I, I noticed on the when I did the three quarter inch packs, it act, the, the fittings work pretty good. These little these little cinch clamps or pinch clamps, um, but on this one inch, it just uh, just doesn't really doesn't really pinch all the way closed, and it does, just doesn't seem to make a good connection. So um, these drips may may stop, uh, you know, once everything kind of warms up and and things kind of settle in. There could be some some tension on this. These pipes are really stiff when it's cold outside, so. But uh, what I might do is, is get a, a hose clamp and replace these uh, or just get some new one inch packs and rerun this whole thing with, uh, with new packs. So I think that, that probably was part of my issue. I also know that these are the cheap kind of PEX clamps. So that, that may have been, been the problem too. So it's at, uh, it's at about 50 degrees right now. And we'll let this thing run for, for a while and heat up. I've got our circulation pump plugged in as well, so that's circulating water. And right now I just have it diverted, so it's just circulating. Um, it's just basically coming in here and out and back to the boiler, so I'm just circulating around. I'm not going through the through the raised bed yet. Um, I did run it through the raised bed, and the fittings on the inside, these three quarter inch fittings here, and then the couplings I did on the inside, they they don't seem to be leaking. So uh, I think I think the three quarter inch ones worked well, and you can actually see they they pinch down quite a bit more. Uh, also, so man, these things are just junk. They're mainly just burning junk in here, willow and green or wet wood that uh, just stuff that I don't want to burn inside. 
So now it's just a matter of, of waiting really and we'll uh, let this thing get up to temperature. I'm probably gonna adjust the temperature on the boiler a little bit. Right now it's set at about 180 degrees. I don't know if you can see in there or not. So it's set at about 180 degrees. So I'm gonna turn that down to about 160. And all you have to do is just grab a screwdriver. I'll just grab a screwdriver and adjust that down a little bit. And uh, I don't need the water to be that hot. So a lot of people had talked about, you know, using a mixing valve and other things like that. And I really think with this, I can just adjust the temperature here, 160, maybe even 150, and uh, just see what works and what will keep that bed warm. People talked about it, you know, evaporating all the water out of it and drying it out or, you know, cooking the roots and other things. So yeah, obviously I got to be careful and we'll figure out what will work best in that bed. Uh, and I might actually, you know, I may have to do a mixing valve down the road if, if that becomes an issue. But right now, I think if I set it down, maybe 160 uh, for now, um, I may even go lower than that, maybe go 140. So uh, I don't want to be burning through a bunch of wood with this thing either. So it'd be nice to just uh, fill it once a day and, and be done with it. The soil's still still frozen in here, that's for sure. So um, the uh, boiler isn't up to temperature yet. I'm gonna wait until I'm gonna wait to turn the diverter on uh, until the boiler gets up to you know 160 degrees. Then I'll turn it on and let it cycle through here uh, overnight. So we'll see what happens. So I've showed these before, but I have these uh, these GoV um, wireless temperature sensors in here. Um, I have actually used these in our chicken brooder to make sure that the temperatures for the baby chicks are, you know, adequate or they're not dropping too, too cold or whatever. Um, and uh, these things are great. So I've got a couple in the house to monitor temperatures in the house. I've got uh, one outside. I've got one in the uh, chicken brooder and then I've got one in here. So with those little temperature sensors, that way I can always check uh, the greenhouse temperature and I can also monitor it. So it actually keeps record of, you know, all the data um on those temperature sensors so i can go back for the week and i can compare how cold it was outside at nighttime to how warm the greenhouse stayed at nighttime what the temperature difference was um, and really kind of play with the, the boiler temperatures and see what, what what i need to do to, to keep the temperatures up in here so those little sensors are going to help me out a lot when i'm trying to get this thing figured out and get things set up in here and once i'm comfortable and confident that we're not dropping below you know 40 degrees in here overnight then we're gonna get this thing planted and uh, get some stuff growing in here. So I'm excited about that. But I'll put a link in the description to those, uh, those little temperature sensors. Um, again, I've talked about these before and I've been using them for about a month now and I really like them. So check them out. Well, what do you guys think? Is, uh, is it gonna work? Is this thing gonna heat uh, this much soil? Is it gonna be, be warm enough to, to warm the greenhouse and keep it uh, above freezing for, for these next few months? Uh, only time will tell. We're only gonna, the only way we're gonna find out is if we, uh, is if we do it. So uh, hopefully the, uh, the boiler will get up to temperature here soon and you'll have to find out what happens to check out the next video. What do you think of those PEX fittings? What am I doing wrong? Am I, do I have the wrong tool? Do I have the wrong, the wrong, uh, the wrong clamps? Uh, what's going on with those things? I've, I, like I said, I'm, a, I'm an amateur when it comes to PEX. I've stayed away from it because, uh, I, you know, buying all the tools to just do uh, you know piping i don't do that much of it uh it's just kind of annoying but uh i'll probably do more of it now and uh maybe i'll maybe i'll go buy the better the better clamps and the better tool maple syrup it was uh the sap was running today uh, i i put a test uh, tap out and it was running so uh man i might have to get on it this week and and get some taps out so videos on maple syrup coming up soon I'm not going to have my sugar shack done on time, but I can still use the evaporator that we have in here. And so, man, it's lots of things in the greenhouse going on. So stay tuned for that. If it's your first time here, thanks for stopping by. Subscribe if you want to follow along and uh, check out uh, new videos. We try to put out uh, three or four videos a week. And don't forget to hit thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.